Hi guys, Ollie here. I am a final year graduate entry medical student at the University of Warwick in the UK. Now, I've got a load of new interview content and interview prep materials coming and ready for you guys um, to be released once the UCAS deadline passes. Essentially, the situation is I don't think it's relevant or sensible to release that content yet, A, until it's ready and B, when it's the right time. Um, to be of most use for you guys and I realize that most people are still very much working on their personal statements So with that in mind guys, that's just to let you know that a load of new content is coming I'm very excited to get that to you and I can be making stuff that you guys want to see for today's video I've been sent a lot of personal statement uh, Questions over the last few weeks and I've been reviewing uh, I've now done I think 80 something for you guys this year have been reviewing statements so I thought this would be a good chance just to answer some of these questions while we've got a couple of weeks left for people to still make changes and hopefully some of it will be useful for you. So the first question is, do you mind reviewing mine? I need some help, I'm really struggling. Yeah, sure, as you guys know, I'm very happy to review personal statements. If you want me to take a look at something, the best way is use my website, link in the description below, drop me a message and we can go from there. I'm happy to do that. What I will say is it takes me time to do. Obviously, I've got my own clinical commitments. I've got research and stuff going on. I can't devote all of my time to this or as much time as I would necessarily like. So basically, don't expect an instant turnaround. Um, maybe allow me four or five days of working to at the moment to, to give it a proper good review and give some good commentary because it needs to be done properly. If it's an emergency, like something is going catastrophically wrong, um, you know, I'm happy to try because an hour or two of missed sleep for me that maybe gets someone a med school place or makes them feel a bit happier, that's that's a good outcome um, as far as I'm concerned. But for the most part, try and give me a reasonable amount of time. And I will say as well, because of that, once we get to like the 9th, 10th of October, when obviously we're going to be hitting uh, the deadline likely before I'd be able to turn something around for you, around the 10th of October is when I'm going to start saying, I actually don't really have time, unfortunately, anymore, as much as I would love to be able to. So sure, as long as I get a reasonable bit of notice and you're okay with that, then yes, I'm happy to have a look. Do you charge to review personal statements? Uh, no, never have, never will. I think it is a, it's a very difficult practice for me to ethically or morally justify to myself. And that's not because I don't think that people should be paid for their labor. They absolutely should. As I've said before, the problem that I have is with medical students and doctors claiming to have some degree of authority or more knowledge than most and then capitalizing on that and selling it to desperate pre-meds who are just trying to jump through all these ridiculous hoops you have to jump through to become a doctor. How important is the personal statement ultimately? Um, this is a really good question and I think the personal statement is often a huge source of stress for people, right, more than I think it necessarily should be. I think people tend to overestimate how important they are. Personal statements are an incredibly like biased and unobjective document, right? And those two things make me a little bit uncomfortable. I've essentially got no way of verifying all of the things that someone tells me in their personal statement, at least in terms of things that they've done. And I also don't know that they wrote it. I guess what I'm ultimately trying to say is that I do not expect personal statements to be a significant part of the decision-making process, certainly at least not in comparison to more objective measures like A-levels or a degree score or a UCAT score or an interview performance, right? Because these are all things that you have to do on paper and be properly assessed. What I would imagine is that they're more often used when differentiating between two candidates that are otherwise similar in their, in their metrics. I think that is more the importance that I would place on a personal statement. So not unimportant, but not as important as the other parts of the process. That's my read. How can I stand out on my personal statement? Right, this is one of the really difficult things and, and one of the most common things that I get asked, particularly when people are thinking about work experience, is what work experience and things can I do to guarantee that I stand out? As far as I read it, you basically can't. These things are always gonna be clouded by who has access to what and what opportunities different people have available to them. What I certainly look for when I read them and what interests me, having read hundreds of them, is people who are able to reflect on what they have done and say, this is why I'm interested in medicine, this is what I did about it, 
this is what I learned and this is how it's going to benefit me or not benefit me when I'm practicing as a doctor. This is how it's influenced my decision to study medicine. Something like um, I shadowed for two weeks in psychiatry and I remember an incident where the psychiatrist shouted at one of the mental health nurses and I thought this was a really poor example of leadership and teamwork and these things are actually really important because we need everyone to work together because it's ultimately the patient that is going to suffer if that happens even though the patient doesn't have anything to do with it and so when I go forward as a doctor I'm going to pay attention to my team dynamics and make sure that I am interacting with people properly and professionally like I think as long as you take your experiences and you carry it all the way through using your point evidence explain this is what happened this is what I learned this is what the consequences are going to be and why it's important and you expand properly rather than just listing a million billion achievements that are I guess on paper impressive but without elaboration I don't really care about it's much more about the depth than breadth that's what I would say what do you think about including humor um yeah there, there absolutely is a place for humor you know if that's your personality and you think it adds to the text and you're fairly confident that whatever you've said is going to land well with whoever reads it not just someone who gets your sense of humor but it's you know a fairly universally appreciable joke or form of humor then sure it's a literary device like anything else the personal statement as i've said in my previous videos on this is a piece of persuasive writing and if you're going to use humor as a device in order to try and sell something as people often do and you think it's appropriate and you're confident then yeah sure go for it advice on non-conventional routes to medicine should i be open or honest about it yeah I genuinely think you absolutely should because particularly when reading a lot of pre-med personal statements people tend to actually do the same things you know I did a hospital placement here I did some volunteering here I was part of this this and this society these are all really good things but you get used to it and actually I really enjoy reading the ones that are a little bit more unusual particularly from people who are a bit older or come from a non-science background and the best ones that I've read at least in my view are are the ones that take those strengths that they identify they have you know maybe you you played an instrument as part of an orchestra or you you worked in events management or you worked in the catering industry or something like that where they all have very much their own problems and different sets of rules and you can pull out those skill sets those transferable skills and tell me not only that you recognize why they will be useful in medicine but how and why these things are important when looking after patients or how it's going to influence your future career then that's really interesting to me so there are two here that are kind of similar what other valuable experience can i talk about if i've got no medical work experience and should you mention if you've had cancelled medical work experience this is really difficult you know I, I really feel for you guys who were maybe hoping that the summer would have given you the time you needed in order to get the work experience to meet any deadlines and some universities have been if you have had cancelled work experience the problem that i can see with with talking about that you're going to be spending characters on telling me about something that you haven't done if, if that makes sense something that doesn't actually apply to you was this work experience going to be an opportunity to explore something specific or explore an interest further um, in which case it may be worth including you know I have been fascinated with heart surgery so I had this placement booked in this hospital to observe some heart surgery and I was hoping to explore the relationship between X Y and Z and learn this this and that that's more interesting because it at least shows me that you've thought about it and you were doing it for a reason not just I need to get work experience and it was the only thing that was available so that's what I'm doing if you have no medical work experience that I think will be a problem um, particularly when it comes to the interview because you really do need some insight into what a medical career is actually like and what what shop floor is like in order to make an educated choice to pursue a career as a doctor I think what you should do is make an effort and demonstrate that you've made an effort whether it's through these virtual work experience schemes that I think Brighton and Sussex were doing or reading you know medical books about doctors 
or just speaking to doctors, even if that's over the phone or on social media or something, show that you have tried to learn as much as possible about what the realities of the career and what doctors actually do are going to be like, because that is the role of your medical work experience. The point of that is to demonstrate that you understand what it's actually going to be like, what the negatives are, what the positives are, you know, how does it affect their home life? Do they have children? How is it like interacting with sick people all day, every day? It's the much more human factors um, kind of stuff. So I would make an effort to show that you've understood that if you can't get that sort of work experience. How do you get started? I'm troubled and daunted by the blank piece of paper in front of me. Um, what I would suggest, and I, I totally get this, I'm going through this myself with my job application questions at the moment, break it up into chunk, um, even if that's just introduction, you know, interest in medicine, work experience, career experience, hobbies, chunk it and just work on one piece at once. Even if you don't know how it's all going to slot together yet, because that's, that's very much an end stage of the process, you know what you've done, you know why you're interested in medicine, you know what you want, and you know why you're pretty good. I would say just try and do a paragraph at a time. Write a paragraph about your hobbies, put that to one side, write four or five lines about your work experience and what you learned, even if it's just one point, put that to one side. And then just do one thing at once. You don't have to tackle the whole task as one piece. Break it down into manageable chunks. You'll build momentum, basically, and by the end, you'll have something that will actually fit together in some coherent way. So don't be worried. Uh, the penultimate question is, do early or late submissions matter? Uh, late submissions, yes, absolutely do matter, and that is a situation that we should be avoiding at all costs, because once you get into the medical world, right, when we're talking about doing exams on time, submitting uh, for conferences and submitting abstracts and getting things published. You know, even, even in my own leadership roles, when I've been asking people to do things or running events where people need to submit things to me on time, like, sorry, if you're after the deadline, that's not fair on the other candidates who did put in the effort to get things in on time. Obviously, emergencies are different and UCAS has a system in place. It has mitigating circumstances or special circs or whatever they call it. Basically, if you miss the deadline, do not expect a medical school to even look at it because there are hundreds and hundreds of other people. And if you submit late, that's a very easy way for them to have one less candidate to think about. Does it matter how early in the process you submit your personal statement, as in if you get it in early, are they going to be spending more time looking at personal statements because it sat on the desk longer? I see where this comes from and it was certainly something that our school said to us when I was like 17. I'm not sure I actually believe that. A, if that is happening, that's an incredibly unfair component to the system because there is no point in setting a deadline if the deadline doesn't actually mean anything. And secondly, because of what I said before about how I think the personal statement for medicine is actually used, not as a central part of your application, but for decision making later on down the line when they're actually really struggling to separate people, I wouldn't worry if it were me. You know, if you get it in at two minutes before the deadline, I honestly wouldn't worry about it too much. That's my take on it. And then the last question is about books. Strangely enough, one of my favourite things where one person has asked, um, what are some unusual books that I could read uh, to demonstrate my interest? And another person has asked, is it worth quoting books? Or, or mentioning that I've read particular books. So with regards to the first one, what are some unusual books that I can read? You're right, I think, in that there are a list of books that people have typically read, whether that's This Is Gonna Hurt or Do No Harm. Yes, they are a bit of a cliche, I think, and I would avoid them unless you are making some very specific point that is likely to be unique to you. That's what I would say. I would find it quite interesting, actually, if someone suggested a completely non-medical book, um, something that, that kind of maybe wasn't even to do with health, but was about human relationships or art or history or something like that, and you were able to relate that to medicine if it's had some impact on you, that might be quite interesting. It would certainly be unusual. And with regards to the second one, is it worth using quotes from books or quotes more generally, they are a bit of a turn-off for me 
to be honest, but that's mostly because most people who use quotes do not do it very well, or they don't make it clear that a lot of deep thought has gone into it. I, I can very easily tell what I'm trying to say when someone has thought, it will read well if I put a quote from a medical book and that will make me look good in my personal statement. No, it makes you look like a jackass, <laughs> to be honest. It's one of those things, it's high risk, high reward, I think, when we're talking about direct quotes and mentioning books. If it's interesting and a really valid point, to me it really boosts a personal statement. Um, if it's not, and it's very vague and generic and it doesn't really show much independent thought, then when I'm reading them, it loses points for them. And I think it's a lot easier to lose points with quotes and things than it is to gain them. Okay guys, that's where we're gonna wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out ollieburton.com for all of my free articles and interview prep resources and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching guys there are three ways you can support the channel the first is by subscribing and sharing with a friend the second is you can use my ko-fi link to buy me a coffee and help keep me awake during the editing process and then lastly you can use my referral link in the description below to save 10 percent off your first year subscription to complete anatomy my favorite 3d anatomy learning tool which i use each and every day when you buy using my link i'll get a small kickback when you do take care guys and i'll see you in the next video